You know, I, I, I first and foremost just like to, to thank the city of Memphis. This has been a, a great experience for our football team and for our program. I, I think one of the great things about a bowl experience is the opportunity to grow both on the field and off the field. And, you know, for our football team from going to St. Jude yesterday and, and the powerful experience that that was for not only our football program, but myself and our kids to to see just what that hospital system's doing and the the progress that they make and the impact that they're making. And, you know, for us, the, the National Civil Rights Museum, we took our entire team there on, on Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon. And the impact and the power that, that that had on our football team and some powerful discussions afterwards. So, you know, it, it's been great to have a good time. It's been great to come better ourselves as a football team, but there's it's been really great to grow as a football program, and I think we had the opportunity to do that this week. So the hospitality has been unbelievable. The people have been fantastic, but uh, it's been a great experience so far for our football team. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know if there's a magic formula to that. You know, I, I think it's just the a lot of our success, both taking care of the football and I think having the ability to create turnovers has been the consistency of play. I, I think if you really look at our football team and you look at the, the quarters that we played this year, you've seen a really consistent football team. I, there hasn't been a lot of highs and lows. I think it's pretty been pretty consistent. And I, the thing for our team when we've played our best football it's been able to play in unison offensively, defensively, and then obviously on special teams and taking care of each other. And, um, you know, I, I think that's really just goes to consistency. And this group's certainly been a really consistent football team all year long. Yeah, you know, I, I I really felt good about our defense leaving spring practice, you know, and going into fall camp. And I I, I know I, I, I said this statement, I probably said this once or twice, but I, I, I think I said to somebody, maybe even in here, that I thought our linebacker crew could be one of the best in the country, you know, at the end of the year. And, you know, lo and behold, you know, you got two all-conference kids and a, and, a, and a Mike linebacker guy named All-American. And so, you know, I, I thought that with that group and the growth of that group, as well as the defensive line and how young those guys were, but really talented that group was, I felt like we had a chance to have a foundational start to be in a really good defense. And, you know, it took us a little bit to, you know, we were so young in so many ways that I, I wanted to lay a really good foundation to what we were doing defensively. I didn't want to become the jack of all trades and the master of none early. You know, we wanted to get good at something. And so, you know, it took us those first, you know, really those first three games, four games till we got to Akron in that bye week till we could make some adjustments that could really allow our team to grow. Um, but I thought the growth of our team from that point on was outstanding and certainly the defense as well. And I give credit to Coach Haycock and our defensive staff to kind of putting those pu those puzzle pieces in the right place to be successful. But a lot of discussion and I thought did a great job at the end of it. Yeah, I, I think if to, to it's hard for me to say one guy was more important than any of them, to be honest with you. You know, Brian's been a consistent piece of of our football team from last year to this year and you know you know pop, hopefully be an anchor coming back to a guy that's played a lot of football for us but you know you're talking about a, a guy that's played a lot of football and, and to me the more experience you have in this sport and the more experience you have playing big games in critical situations the more success you have if football's really important to you and Brian's a guy that football's really important to so I think his leadership more than maybe anything else has been a great anchor for that defense. Yeah, I, I haven't, um, though, I'm, you know, I think we talked a little bit about our time at Toledo. You know, maybe it was my second to last year there where you know, we just, it was a tough situation, you know, where we had lost lost our starting quarterback at a Kent State game, you know, late, early in November, and then, you know, lost the backup quarterback in the next game playing Northern Illinois for the MAC championship and then ended up playing a wide receiver, you know, in, in that game that ended up playing pretty good for us, but then kind of able to balance it out and really have a great run by the end of the season. 
So, you know, at least we were dealt that, you know, experience to have to work through it and go through it. And, you know, when those things happen, how do you respond to it? The great thing about us offensively is, yes, our quarterback's really important to us. But, you know, when you want to run the football, when you want to have the ability to use your best players, you know, the quarterback, his, his number one priority is take care of the football and then do a great job of leading the football team. And, you know, fortunately for us, uh, you know, really all those guys have done a great job for us in, the, in that aspect. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think if you know me, you know, and, and certainly you know how we run our program and, you know, let alone thinking any, anything more than a, a week ahead, it's a day ahead. And, you know, obviously that's the great challenge for next year's group is, is it's a totally different football team. We lose 20 seniors who the impact that these guys have made in, in Iowa State football is, is phenomenal. And so, you know, when we come back really two weeks from now, there will be no Joel Lanning and no Alan Lazard and no Jake Campos. And so who steps into those roles and how do they? And, you know, those conversations have already been had with a lot of guys in our program. And so I, I think that's the thing that's really fun about my job and that's what's great about coaching and that's what's great about building a program is the expectations don't change. And really the expectations only get greater and yet it all goes back to starting this process all the way back at square one, how you come into work out, how you get better day in and day out. You've got to win the month of January and you got to have the ability to, to really do a great job of developing in your program. So to me, it, I enjoy, I probably enjoy January, February, March, April, May, June and July more than I do, you know, the college football season because it's there where you earn the right to even have a chance to be successful once the season comes. Yeah, I, I, I certainly think we're we're better than we were a year ago. You know, I, I that's the area that where our growth is even from year one to year two and year two to now going into year three. You, you know, it was really rewarding to watch watch these practices leading up to this week and watching the amount of guys on the offensive line now that have the ability to actually be true starters in the Big Twelve and have a chance to to really be be football players that, that you can count on and get themselves better and certainly a lot of development to happen. Our defensive backfield, the depth, linebacker, running back, you know, wide receiver, tight ends. There's people in those positions now that have the ability to have success. A lot of those guys are young and have had some success already and now they're going to get pushed by guys that maybe Richard this year that we think could be really good players too and that competition I think that starts to foster a, a lot of a lot of real positive growth in your football program. So for us, I, I think it's a lot better, and I, I'm really excited to get this recruiting class that, that we've already signed in. Um, five of those guys will join us next week, so we're excited to get those guys here and ready to go, and then obviously you know, get the rest of those guys here come June and, and see what this football team really looks like. I think you're a guy that's a fan of the early signing period. Yeah. What challenges does that give a program now that you've done it once when it comes to your trying to prepare for a bowl game and you're trying to sign 20 yeah. Well, you know, I, I think we probably felt overwhelmed at times, but I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I worse, we've worked so so far ahead in in a, in a really positive way that so much of that signing class had already been signed and had stayed with us. And you know, I think we were able to have some good wins at the end in recruiting. That you're able to balance. You know, when you're I don't when there's a lack of organization maybe, and you feel like you're trying to play catch up or you're trying to sign your class at the end, I think that could be really hard and certainly really challenging. But you know, the thing, the positive for us is we've been in bowl games, we know how to prepare for bowl games and we knew what to expect with that. And you know, it was just trying to balance out, you know, how do you handle, how do you handle not only this aspect of recruiting, what would let up till the first signing day, but then once you go back out in January here on the 11th, you know, what's your process gonna be like? What are you trying to get accomplished and how are you are trying to get it done? And you know, so I think a lot of different dynamics, but I, I, I like the change. It's been good for our staff. I know it's been really hard on our staff, to be honest with you, trying to 
get that done, you know, finish the season the right way, get the signing class done, and then jump right into bowl preparation. Usually there's a chance to, to get a little bit of a breath before you actually start for bowl prep, just depending on when that game is. And we didn't have that, but you know what, that's okay. We'll get that on the back end here once this game's over with and get ready for that second phase of recruiting. Geez, I, there's so many of them, you know, in, in this game. I, I think that's that's what's fascinating about this matchup. You know, I, I, you look at certainly their skill on offense, and and you know, a veteran quarterback and Riley Ferguson who does such a great job distributing the football and comfortable in what he does. I, I think that's going to be it's going to be a, a great asset, you know, in terms of when you watch Memphis play and, and their success. And then once you, as soon as you you think you're going to you know be able to play coverage, they they've got such a great ability to run the ball. Really impressed with their running game. And then defensively, it's all about their ability to create turnovers and the pressure that they can create. And you know when you, when they force you offensively to play behind the sticks, you know I think it's a collective whole for them defensively. It's a mentality, and I appreciate that from when I watch those guys on defense. Is their their ability to really force you to play behind the sticks, they, it really becomes to their advantage. So I think a lot of unique matchups, and, and we're certainly not even hitting on special teams. You know, a, a league kickoff return team. Um, you know, and, and I certainly don't discredit just the kick returner, but the other ten guys out there that are blocking are, are really impressive. I, I give them a lot of credit. They know what they're doing. They're physical, and you know, they've certainly a, allowed you know their kick returner to have great success this year. So I think special teams will be a huge difference in this football game. Yeah, yeah, it's unique. You know, I, I think just the a lot of the challenges that came our way, um, you know, and and they've been unique. Um, you, you, there's no book to to tell you how to handle all those situations. I think you got to always put your team and and the football team, you know, at the number one priority of making decisions and. You know, I think there was a lot of those along the way this year. But, you know, at the end of it, our staff and, and really the leadership in our locker room had the ability to handle it and the maturity to handle it. And it was, I think that's probably the greatest reward for me from watching this football team play is there's a lot of a lot of times that this thing probably could have went the other way and had our locker room and the leadership of our seniors hadn't been at the forefront. I think it would have been really tough to overcome a season like this with some of the storylines behind the scenes that obviously you guys know about that you know, didn't make it easy for a collective team to work through, especially when those storylines come through the middle of the season while you're trying to go win football games. Well, you know, I, I think one of the best things we do is, you know, we've got a great leadership team that meets, you know, we'll start meeting once we get back in January. We'll vote on that. I think one of the greatest rewards you can get in our program is to to be thought of, you know, in our program a, as a leader. And, you know, that's all classes and that's all position groups. And, you know, that team started meeting last year in January and met weekly up until the start of the football season. And I think you know, – it's probably one of the, the great mistakes that I made as a young young head football coach is in my first year as a head football coach, I, uh, we were we had great success and I, you know I, I, I probably miscalculated the fact that you're, you've got to teach young men how to lead. you know it's, it's one thing that I, it's still our job and it's our responsibility as, as the head football coach. And really one of the things that I've grown to love and um, you know our second year we probably didn't have the success that I would have wanted our team to have. And, you know, I had to look back and I had to point the finger at myself. You know, I, I had missed the boat. And, you know, from that point on, it's been really my my job and my responsibility to, to instill that in our football program and at least give them the tools to use, you know, when situations positive and negative come up. And, um, you know, it's it's been really fun to go through that process here at Iowa State and really fun to be able to have such mature young men the last two years be able to handle those situations and be able to go through a lot of these situations together. Yeah, you know, I, I we've been asked that question a lot. I'll be honest with you, I, did, I probably didn't even know that stat till the till we went into the last game, you know, of of the season and. 
I, I, what I do know and what we do talk about is obviously the turnover battle, and that's something that's really important to us, the ability for us in our football program to, you know, win in the inches and win in the margins. And, and, you know, where we're at as a football team and a football program right now, that's really critical to our success. We're, we're not good enough to just sit there and, you know, beat you because we're, we're better than you. we got to do the little things really well to be successful. And that's a credit to our kids, to be honest with you, their ability and their focus to, to, to maintain the football. And, you know, that's something that we can control. We talk a lot about control our controllables, and that's something certainly that our kids have done a great job. We do practice it. We rep it. But so does everybody in the country. Um, I don't think we're doing anything that's different. Um, but it's something that we've talked about and we've made really, really important. And our kids have really done a phenomenal job buying into that, holding themselves accountable, and then holding their teammates accountable to it. So um, that's probably been the best answer I can give on that situation. <laughs> yeah, you might as well chalk it up for for one more shot at that. So, you know, I, I think we probably hit that about every game we played this year. So, um, it, you know, it is what it is. And, you know, we again, those are things we can't control and we really don't talk about. But I think the reality of it is, is that's why you got to play the game. And, you know, our, our football team gets the opportunity to take care of ourselves, you know, how we practice, how we go about our business, how we handle I think, again, the adversity of not being playing in a bowl game, not playing this late in, in the college football season before, and trying to learn how to do that. And I think those are things that are really important for this team, and it's our success um, come Saturday. But uh, it's been really fun to teach this group. It's been really fun for them to buy into what it takes to do that. And again, I, I, I have said this. I, I've gone to, you know, we started practice July 31st here at Iowa State, and this team hasn't disappointed me in a practice yet this year, and I really appreciate that about this group. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think to me, it's what the how they play the next 60 minutes, what that means to to this team, and you know, winning and losing takes care of itself if you do the, the little things the right way, and. Again, I think it goes back to what I just said about this group, how they've prepared, how they've detailed, how they've handled adversity, how they've handled success. All those things have been a cultural shift in our Iowa State football program from you know where we were to certainly where we're at right now and hopefully where we have the ability to go. And you know, again, this is just a, this whole experience has been another opportunity of great growth for Iowa State football. And, you know, obviously capped off on Saturday. You know, winning and losing, though, you know, usually takes care of itself when you do the little things the right way. Well, you know, again, it's what makes Iowa State really special is the people. And, you know, from the day I've gotten here to, you know, two years later, it, it's the people. And you see the support, you see the energy starting to pick up even around our hotel the last two days. And, the environment that that's created even in our own hotel you know you can't and i can't thank these people enough because the reason we're even at this point is they've been the one beacon of hope that iowa state football has had and so you know it's what we've used over the last two years to really generate excitement in recruiting and and really start to sell the vision of where we think Iowa State football can go. And it's, you know, we're just honored that we can reward them with another opportunity to, to play, a, obviously, in a bowl game and, and have this experience. But we're grateful for the support. It's, it's certainly been the difference for us. What is the next Yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I don't know, but we'll go to work on that. He's, he's one of the most explosive players we have on our team. Um, you know, I, I would I would be lying to say we we didn't miss him this year because we did, you know you're talking about elite speed you know elite kick returner himself, but one of the great things that's been able to to, to watch about Kane is the growth that he was able to make. You know sometimes guys get injured and that stunts their growth, but Kane it was a situation where my challenge to him was can you better yourself and. How do you get better? What are some of the things that maybe you can't do in running? We know you'll be back to be able to run at the speed and the level you've been able to, but how do you get better now You know, through this seven to eight month rehab process in terms of catching the football, in terms of learning the offensive scheme, in terms of all those things? So I, I think you're going to see a really dynamic football player. It's almost like you're getting a new toy and recruiting a little bit in some way, shape, or form. I mean, this guy is, uh, in, in my opinion, 
one of the most explosive players we've ever coached. So I think you'll see his role be multiple in a lot of ways, but I, I'm really excited to get Kane back, and I'm really proud of him. I mean, you're, there's a kid that not only had a great offseason, but he also got a 3-9 in, in engineering also this, this offseason. So pretty proud of him. Well, you know, he's he he's certainly the only guy that's had any experience, you know, coming back and a guy that's, you know, played really good in the Oklahoma State game and, and did a great job, you know, winning on the road at Baylor. And, um, you know, so I think Zeb's got all the tools to be a guy that's the number one quarterback. And, you know, how, do, how does he handle, you know, how does he handle his own preparation and detail and consistency that he continues to need to show to be that guy consistently for us. But uh, I'm excited for Zeb and, and he should be excited as well. Oh, I'd have to imagine it'll be a pretty typical road game environment. You know, that's how we're treating it. And certainly, you know, it's great that, that we've got so many great fans that have been willing to, to make the, the trip with us and support us. But uh, I'm sure it'll be a great game day atmosphere. I have a, you know, I think myself and our, our team expect that. Yeah, uh, again, the, the growth that David Montgomery has made is – is so directly correlated to the time and the effort that he's put in when nobody else was watching him to be successful. And so I think the only, the only thing that I can say is I think what he's done to you know, validate that process and his own work ethic in the months of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, and August is he's shown the young players in our program, if you want to be the best, then this is what you've got to do and sacrifice to become the best. And I've always said this. I, I'm just a believer in it. When I played, um, I felt this way. And, and as a coach, I feel this way. When your best players are your hardest workers, then all of a sudden your program has a chance to become really special. And David gives that to Iowa State football. And I think what he's done is it's probably the greatest growth is he's taken on that leadership role. And I think he knows as the success has come his way that he knows that that work ethic has been – you know, really the foundation of why these successes are happening for him. And I think those are things he can give back to everybody else and has given back to so many of his teammates. Yeah, no, it's certainly impressive. You know, you, you watch them play and there's not a game that you can turn on and say, boy, somebody did a great job of really slowing them down. Um, you know, I, I, it's, it's a credit to I, I, I've said this a little bit, that, that quarterback system where the quarterback is so ingrained in the offensive system that he knows the answers. And when that happens and you get a quarterback like Riley who's comfortable with what's being asked of him, he knows the answers, and you don't have to look over to the sideline to the coordinator to make the change. Riley can do that for you. That's what you're getting. And I, when you have that and you get that, that makes you you become a really powerful, potent offense. And certainly Memphis has that right now. And that's not to negate any of the great skill players that are around them. It's, I think that's, that's, that part equally makes the explosiveness of them offense really special. Not really. You know, I, I just I think from my end of it, um, you know, you, you, you study the landscape of college football right now. And, you know, I think we had them highly rated, you know, but um, the top 25, you know, for myself and for our program, I think we, we try to give everybody the, the respect that they deserve. But, you know, have a ton of respect for Coach Norvell and this team. So that that really I don't think that that says much. And really, those top 25 polls are really important at the end of the season. Um, not right now. Awesome. Thank you, guys.